Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's talk about using Azure API management with Logic Apps. If you've used APIM with Logic Apps consumption, you know that it's a simple process to expose a consumption-based HTTP triggered Logic App using APIM. You would simply set the API type to Logic Apps and then select the Logic App you want to expose. If you're using a Logic App standard, this is a little bit more of a tricky process. In order to expose your Logic App standard endpoints via APIM, you do have to do a little bit more configuration. It's definitely not that difficult, and once you see how to do it, it's going to make total sense. So let's jump into APIM and see how we could expose our HTTP triggered Logic App standard workflows. So let's take a look at how to set this up in APIM. First off, we're going to start by going to our Logic App standard and going to the Logic App workflow that has the HTTP endpoint that we want to expose. In this case, it's this one here called order status. I'm going to simply click on that workflow and I'm going to navigate to the HTTP receive here and simply copy this URL. We're going to use this URL inside of our APIM when we go about setting up the forward into this Logic App. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this here in Notepad++. So the first thing I want to do is split out the root URL, which is this part here up to and including the slash API. Everything after that is the information about the workflow that's going to get executed. You can see here it's the workflow name, triggers, the HTTP trigger name, and then some various information for authentication into that workflow. So I'm going to use both of these pieces of information inside of my APIM. So let's jump over to our Azure APIM. And this is just a consumption-based API management that I have set up. First thing I want to do is I'm going to go create a new API of HTTP type. I'm going to call it something like get order status. And right here in this web service URL, this is where I want to paste this first part of the URL. This is the same for all workflows that are inside that same standard edition logic app. Because remember, standard edition logic apps can have multiple workflows hosted inside of a single uh, logic app. So this would be that root address into all the workflows in that logic app. So with that, I'm going to paste that here in this web service URL section. Then I'm simply going to go create. And then here I can go ahead and create an operation. So I'm going to come over here and click add operation and give me some more room here. And I'm going to say order status and grab this, the name and put it as part of the URL. It's just going to be a post and simply this could be anything in this URL section, but I'm just going to use it the same as the name. So it's easy to understand everything else. I'm going to leave the same. I could simply click save on this. And that's pretty much as simple as it is to create the API and our operation. Now we need to essentially tie this operation to that specific trigger in our Logic App standard workflow. So to do that, I am going to now copy the back section of this URL, the piece after the API section, and I'm going to come back to my APIM. Now here's where it can get a little tricky if you click on all operations versus clicking on your specific operation. Clicking on all operations, you'll define settings over here for all operations in that API. If you just want to edit a specific operation, you need to make sure you're highlighted and selected on that specific operation. So in this case, I'm going to make sure I have order status selected. I'm going to come over here to my inbound processing. And here is where I want to make sure I forward those requests to our specific workflow. You can see here under back end that it has automatically populated that first part of our logic app workflow address right here for us automatically. And this will happen to all operations inside of this API. So now let's double check that we have our operations selected and I want to do add policy. In this case, I want to rewrite the URL because I want to change it to send it to the destination. And then here I simply would paste in the back end of the URL for our workflow that I want this request to be sent to. Now it's very important that you do it through this interface here and click save as opposed to driving in here to this inbound processing section and adding it here. It will 
encode certain values inside of this URL to make it work for your XML. So it's going to XML encode those. So unless you wanted to XML encode your stuff by hand, uh, by going in through this front end tool here, it's going to automatically do that for you. So that can be a big time saver. So with that, that's really all you need to do to set this up. If you want to make sure what URL you want to use to test this, you can click on test. You can scroll down here and here's going to be your request URL. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I have this set up in Postman over here. Here's a call into this Logic app that bypasses APIM. I already have this set up. I'll show you what this looks like. And this makes a call in and just returns uh, your order is in progress and gives the current date time. Now we want to see this go through APIM. And I'm just going to uh, old URL from when I was testing it. It's very similar. You can see it's a much cleaner, straightforward URL. And I'm going to try this now. It's actually not going to work because access is denied. So by default, there's security added to that API and APIM. So let's go ahead and disable that. You can do that under design and under all operations, under settings. And down here, I'm going to disable this token authentication. I'm going to save that. And something else I want to point out that can be useful is I'm going to go back to design. And here under all operations, it's very likely I want to restrict who can call this API other than individuals that might have a token because I just disabled the token uh, ability. I can come under add policy and I can do an IP filter. And here I can add a range of IP addresses that are allowed to access this API. So let's add this while we're in here. And I'm going to go ahead and add something that is out of range. So it should not work. And I'm going to add all of this IP address range. And let's go ahead and give that a try again. And you see we got a different error. We got a 403 or forbidden error because now this is APIM blocking based on our IP address. So if we want to open it up to our correct IP address, let's go back into APIM. I'm going to edit this filter expression. And I'm going to set this within the correct range of where my IP for this uh, virtual machine uh, resides. Go ahead and save that. Now we're going to try it again. And this time you can see here it's successful. So it's very straightforward to expose your standard edition logic app workflows through Azure API management. And you can see here you get a much more friendlier URL. And now you have complete control over this API in terms of who can access it. You can set access restrictions, the amount of times they can call it. As you can see here, we set IP restrictions. You can also add token authentication and other types of authentication beyond what Logic App Workflows have. And most importantly, if that backend does change, you redeploy your Logic App into a different name, for example, you simply can change it in APIM and don't have to let your consumers of that API even know that it has changed. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you've learned how to set up your API management with Logic App Standard. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.